Uh, can you hear me? Good Out afternoon, colleagues. Yes. Uh, are we ready to start? Yes. Okay. Let me take this opportunity to welcome everybody today. Uh, the teacher task force members uh, and everybody for participating in this joint teacher task force UNESCO workshop. My name is Enoch Rabutapi. Uh, I am the chief director in the Department of Basic Education in the, uh, in the Republic of South Africa. The workshop today is on global pathways to an attractive teaching profession. This workshop is part of the celebrations of World Teachers Day, whose theme this year is the teachers we need for the education we want, the global imperative to reverse the teacher shortage. We're going to have very exciting engagements today. But before that, I just want to go through a few housekeeping rules. Firstly, please make sure that uh, your audio and video are turned off unless you are taking the floor. Secondly, audio audience members are welcome to introduce themselves in the chat function there and are strongly encouraged to post questions and give their input at any time. Please feel free to raise your hand if you wish to take the floor and turn on your video when you speak. The session will be recorded and will be made available after the workshop. An interpretation in the plenary session is available in English, French, Spanish, and Arabic. So please choose your channel by using the globe icon at the bottom of your screen. And please remember to speak slowly uh, so that the interpreters can correctly translate your intervention. And in the second part of this workshop, uh, we will be splitting into language-based uh, breakout groups where we will have a, a more deeper discussion. At this moment, we want to encourage you to introduce uh, yourself on the chat flat platform and indicate to us where you are connecting from. Now, today's session is very critical. Uh, we are halfway through our uh, sustainable development goals era and UNESCO and the teacher task force have pointed out that there is a continued global teacher uh, shortage of about 44 million teachers who are actually needed to meet our sustainable development goals. Progress is varied between countries and there are many countries which are likely not to achieve this target. In addition, there is increasing evidence that show that the COVID-19 pandemic seems to have exacerbated the global challenge in many contexts, making it even more urgent uh, for policymakers in all regions to intervene. This session is devoted to the issue of teacher gaps and in particular, how countries can improve the attractiveness of the profession and improve retention among in-service teachers. Many individuals are not attracted to teaching and the profession is often seen as one of the last choice. Moreover, where teachers are recruited, challenges in training and deployment can result in lack of qualifications and uneven distribution, often affecting the most vulnerable areas. Further challenges stem from attrition, which is often associated with low salaries, heavy workloads, and lack of autonomy and resources. So the workshop today is specifically de designed uh, to address the following. One, 
foster peer-to-peer -peer learning around common and distinct challenges and experiences to attract and retain teachers. Two, identify evidence-based policy, practice, and strategies that led to improvements in attracting and retaining qualified teachers across the globe. Thirdly, identify the enabling conditions that allow these programs and policies to effect positive change and the possibility of scaling this up. And lastly, to build partnerships and strengthen networks between TTF country focal points and organizational members in support of improved and better targeted policy making and support. So in order to provide some more insight and set the context, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce Mr. Carlos Vargas, Chief of Section of Teacher Development at UNESCO and Head of the Teacher Task Force Secretariat to present uh, to us what are the most pressing teacher gaps and to problematize teacher attrition, turnover, and the overall effectiveness of the teaching profession. Let's welcome Mr. Vargas. Uh, Mr. Vargas, you can do your intervention and you have eight minutes. You have the Thank floor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Enoch, and thanks to everybody joining uh, the webinar today. Um, as, as has been mentioned, the, the topic of this year's World Teachers Day has to do with the teachers that we need for the education that we want and the global imperative to reverse the teacher shortages. Uh, if you may mute uh, Monsieur Taïrou, s'il vous plaît. Uh, so just to say, uh, if we go to the next slide, just to, to share with you some data that we presented yesterday at UNESCO, I know some of you might have followed, so I will make a different uh, nuance. Uh, but the highlight is this. You've probably seen it in the newspapers, in the media uh, yesterday. Uh, the world is short of 44 million teachers. That's, that's the number of teachers that are needed to actually ensure primary and secondary education by 2030. That means to meet the, the sustainable development goals. And this number means that at least the, the, the teacher force needs to grow by 50%. So that means half of the world's teachers need to be recruited. Now, if we go to the next slide, you will see that, the, that this shortage of teachers is distributed separate differently uh, in different regions uh, with sub-Saharan Africa leading on the lack of teachers. Uh, as you can see, there's still 15 million teachers that need to be recruited in sub-Saharan Africa, which means one out of the three, uh, out of one out of three teachers that need to be recruited globally. Uh, we've seen some progress since 2016, uh, some two million teachers uh, posts have been filled but we still see a large gap. Uh, this is due, of course, to a growing demand. Uh, uh, as you know, secondary education became compulsory just a few years back, and, and there is also a need to fill these posts, as, as I will show later. Another, another region, Southern Asia, uh, has the second largest shortage of teachers. Still 7.8 million teachers are needed in the subcontinent. Uh, nonetheless, there has been improvement in this subcontinent, the, 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 the gap of teachers has been halved uh, in, the, in the last seven years, but still uh, it is a large number uh, of teachers that need to be recruited. Now, this is due to massive recruitment that we've seen particularly in very highly populated countries, but also uh, the fact that the population uh, and fertility rates have diminished in some uh, very highly populated countries. We see challenges that you can see in all world regions, uh, and, and I will not reiterate on that, but maybe just to mention an important point. Um, in Europe and North America, in Latin America and the Caribbean, there are shortages of teachers. Five million are needed in Europe and North America, 3.2 additional teachers in Latin America. But here, unlike other regions, for example, particularly in Europe, we see that, that fertility rates are are smaller and they have actually decreased. 
This means that there is a teacher shortage even then where the population of school going age children is shrinking. So this explains, I mean, what this tells us is that in Europe and North America, in Latin America and the Caribbean, the shortage of teachers is mainly due to attrition. That means that teachers are leaving the profession at massive rates as we will see in the next slide. Now, the next slide speaks uh, particularly, not this, but the next, please. Uh, this one just, just highlights the, the issue of that teacher attrition is mostly, um, sorry, teacher shortage is mostly at secondary level. But going back to attrition, um, as we said, um, attrition is a big problem. Teachers are leaving the profession massively. Uh, globally, we've seen attrition rates double from 2015 to, 20, 000, to 2022. So this follows, of course, a trend that started during the pandemic, which exacerbated pre-existing shortages. Many teachers left the profession after harsh conditions, multiple tasks, uh, multiple shifts, and, 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 and realities that we know and we explored uh, in the past couple of years. Uh, so that is an important, that is an important point. Uh, teachers are leaving the profession and we need to find solutions for that. Attrition also has a, a gendered face. Uh, mostly is male primary att attrition is, is twice as much as that of uh, female teachers. And attrition can also be disaggregated by, by different areas or by different subject areas, for example, Teachers in STEM, in science, technology, education, mathematics are the ones that leave the profession more rapidly, like an example we put there in Rwanda, but not only, where are, there are better job opportunities for alternative employment with better salaries than teachers. And of course, STEM being a, main, a, a male dominated, dominated um, area, it is, it is no surprise uh, that uh, there are better opportunities for male teachers than for female teachers. Um, this is also compounded with uh, gender bias and gender beliefs as to whose responsibility is the care and the education of children. Uh, but also, uh, we do see disengagement from female teachers due to housing and safety, particularly in rural, uh, in isolated, in conflict zones. So those are important factors that play uh, into attrition. On the next slide, we will present uh, particularly some characteristics uh, that we know, but that is confirmed of attrition. First of all, that is, attrition is especially harsh in the first years of, uh, of teaching. So this is among novice teachers in the first three to five years, leave the profession at more accelerated rates than others. Then over 55, we also see attrition. Now this might be rather based uh, on, on retirement. But the preoccupation, I think, has to do with the youngest population, the younger teachers that leave the profession, even in geographies, even in places where they have good contracts, good salary conditions, appreciation, etc. There's an example that you can see on this table, particularly in the case of Finland, uh, where 13% of teachers aged 25 to 34 leave the profession, or Norway, where 9% compared to other countries in the same region like Austria with just 1.6% of attrition. So evidence shows that teachers with more experience produce better learning outcomes. Therefore, high levels of attrition also have implications of teacher quality, not to mention the sizes of classes, the pupil teacher ratios, et cetera. Apart from the academic and the, and the, and the quality of, of education effect of attrition, it does have an economic uh, impact. There's a study in the US that was developed by Carver Thomas and Darling Hammond in 2019 that shows that uh, $20,000 or more are needed just to replace a single teacher in urban districts in the US. And as you know, the USA is hardly hit by, by teacher shortages. So this tells us that at the end of the day, it's best to invest from the beginning in good working conditions, in good uh, professional development of teachers and having to recruit, to onboard, to mentor and bring into the profession new teachers to, to, to replace the, the amount of teachers that are living massively. Now, on the next slide, um, if we go to it, uh, we see various factors that drive teachers away. 
One of them we know, uncompetitive salaries. 50% of the countries worldwide pay primary teachers less than other professions requiring similar qualifications. This decreases to 30% in Europe and North America, but still, if you look at the table that you see on your screen, you will see that countries like Hungary or the United States of America or Sierra Leone, we see that teachers actually may less than 50% in some cases or 50% of what other professionals do with the same qualifications. And then we see other countries like Colombia or South Africa where teachers earn twice as much as others uh, requiring uh, a comparable level of qualification. So this of course speaks of one of the, of the main factors, uh, you know, uh, stable working conditions, a good salary that covers needs is something that needs to be guaranteed for all teachers to stay in the profession. There's also the issue of recognition. Uh, where in places where teachers are not recognized, uh, they leave, obviously. We have an example there in Australia where we see that satisfied teachers are actually uh, less likely to leave uh, their profession. The same thing is shown by TALIS, the, the, the Teaching and Learning in International Survey of the OECD, that shows that heavy and stressful workloads lead teachers to leave uh, twice as rapidly as others that do not experience this hardship in teaching. There are personal reasons, of course, there are family obligations, there are many factors that really drive teachers away from teaching. Uh, one of them, as we were saying, is retirement. We, we see population growth, for example, in Europe, in Italy and Lithuania, more than half of primary teachers are at least 50 years old or, or older. And we also see that the new generations for replacement are not coming. Young people are not choosing teaching as a career. And it is no surprise because of the, of the conditions, both material and symbolic on teaching. On the material side, we have the salaries, the contractual, the workloads. On the symbolic side, we see the lack of trust, which is reflected in very little autonomy, in little bit of agency in the classroom, possibilities to make educational decisions in the classrooms, in the schools, uh, in the system. Um, so I will not take much longer and go to the, to the next slide, just to outline something that, that we will be hearing from uh, many examples that we have lined up today. Uh, I believe that we will be hearing from Chile, we will be hearing from China, from Burkina Faso, um, and also from Indonesia as to different examples that policies and programs that have been put in place uh, to address uh, this issue of making the profession more attractive. Uh, and my colleague Ezequiel Molina from the World Bank will be presenting some trends as to how we make policies work. But just to say, uh, as, you, as you may know, after the Transforming Education Summit, the Secretary General of the United Nations put together a high-level panel on the teaching profession. And it is uh, um, the, the, the mandate of this panel is to, to come to recommendations on how to improve the status of teaching. Uh, and, and many of them have to do with the issues that you have on the screen. It has to do with adopting policies that are comprehensive, that are holistic, that take into consideration from recruitment to deployment, to remuneration, professionalization, career pathways in a comprehensive manner. The issue of diversity of the teaching workforce is important. Uh, it, so it, it, it needs to mirror the diversity of communities. Uh, we, we heard from the Global Education Monitoring Report in 2016 that 40% of, 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 of students actually are taught in a language they do not understand. So when we talk about the shortage, we need to talk about not only gender, but linguistic diversity, cultural diversity, etc. Social dialogue with teacher organizations, unions, service commissions, national councils is very important. This should be uh, part and parcel of uh, policy making uh, more democratically. Uh, the issue, as we've said, of teacher well-being, world life balance, competitive compensation is something that needs to make the profession more attractive. Uh, having the skills, the know-how to address very complex situations in different settings is as important. And lastly, uh, just speaking of recognition and appreciation of the role that teachers play socially is something that we should see coming out of governments, coming out of uh, education decision makers, partners, employers, and the rest. 
we need to promote trust and respect for the profession, which is accompanied by agency and autonomy. One final point, we need specific funding going to these transformations. We cannot conceive of a teacher force that is reflective, that produces knowledge, that shares it by means of communities of practice, exchange, reflection, uh, if there's no funding for it. So of course, addressing the teacher gap, making the profession more attractive needs uh, public resources and, and they need to be to it. So I'll stop right here. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for, for, for your attention. And I wish you a very, very fruitful conversation. Very, very happy to hear from the experiences we have today. We, oui, Monsieur Traoré. Thank you, Enoch. Thank you very much, uh, Carlos, uh, for that intervention uh, and to set the context. Now we're going to spend some time to listen now to our panel of experts. Uh, so it is with great pleasure and anticipation that I extend a warm welcome to our distinguished panelists. And they will present to us some examples from as per the various attractive profession. Your unique uh, insights and perspectives will enrich our discussions and contribute to the session's success. So we are honored uh, to have the following as our panelists who have joined us. Firstly, we have Mr. Tahiro Traore uh, from Burkina Faso. He's the professor at the National Ministry of Education and the Promotion of National Languages. Uh, secondly, we've got Ms. Lilia Concha Carreno from Chile. Uh, she's the director of the Center for Teacher Education and Pedagogical Experimentation and Research uh, in the Ministry of Chile. Third, thirdly, we've got uh, Dr. Iwan Siahil from Indonesia. Uh, is the Director of General of Early Childhood Education, Basic Education and Secondary Education, and Director General of Teachers and Education Personnel at the Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology. Then we have Dr. Minxuan Zhang from China. He's the Director for Teacher Education Center under the auspices of UNESCO at Shanghai Normal University, where he is also a professor and former president of the university, as well as vice commissioner of the Shanghai Municipal Education Commission. And finally, we will have Mr. Ezekiel Molina from the World Bank. He's a senior economist in the education global practice and former global lead of the teacher's thematic group. He has worked in Africa, East Asia, Latin America, and South Asia. So at this point, uh, we will then invite Mr. Traore from Burkina Faso, who will give us an intervention. And uh, creating an attractive profession requires a concerted effort and ongoing commitment to prioritize education and full support of teachers. We will then first to Mr. Traore, to, who will describe some of the challenges in Burkina Faso and how the country has worked to resolve the challenges of teachers to ensure they remain in the job and how the country has brought contract teachers into the civil service. Uh, Mr. Traore will have about seven minutes for his intervention. Uh, Mr. Traore, the floor is yours. Hello, Umatande. Hello, I hope that you can hear me. Yes, uh, kindly proceed. Yes, we can hear you. Please proceed. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. For Burkina Faso, we would like to just share with you a few of the uh, elements and measures that we've taken to attract and retain teachers in Burkina Faso. 
first of all, just looking at some of the challenges um, that we're facing, they are essentially um, due to infrastructure quality uh, problems and uh, insufficient infrastructure, teacher shortage, um, the, and in particular, this is true in rural areas. And so to overcome these uh, challenges, um, we saw that the government wanted to adopt uh, a framework of uh, uh, structural adjustment policies with its reform uh, at, in the public sector. And in particular, they adopted law 013 concerning the uh, legal status applicable to anyone working as a civil servant. And this law became the base for recruiting teachers uh, in the education. So we had contract-based teachers and civil servant teachers. The contract-based teachers uh, 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 would have to renew their contract every two years, whereas the, the same was not true for the civil servants. And there was also an attempt to update or perfect the legal framework for recruiting and managing the new times of community, types of community-based T-shirts, which were called the satellite school teachers. Uh, and uh, the, the, they were paid roughly some 40 odd uh, months, uh, euros per month, an equivalent in uh, CFA francs. Um, Hello. Uh Naturally, in the light of these changes, the unions were not going to sit back and let this happen. And so uh, negotiations were undertaken with the government um, uh, as concerned uh, the satellite school teachers. Uh, the recruitment process was dropped, um, making it possible, therefore, uh, to uh, to reach out to those who had the uh, the basic teaching certificate, which is known as the BEPC, which is a uh, a teaching certificate, um, which is the minimum requirement, and those who had actually passed the test were able to join the civil service uh, and go through the more typical recruitment process. Uh, Moreover, there was the a, a stop was put to the uh, contracting under law uh, with uh, under the old law and the adoption of law 081 2015 CNT was taken. What's more, there was a decree passed um, in concerning the particular status of uh, training education and promoting uh, employment at the level of uh, teachers uh, who had a baccalaureate or more. With the, uh, with the adoption of this uh, particular statute, um, uh, teachers were able to uh, yeah, start their teaching career with the brevet d'études secondaires, in other words, the uh, high school leaving diploma, or with a university degree or diploma, which meant that they could uh, take part as a category A1 when it came to when it came to sitting exams or profession, professional competitive exams. The main takeaways with the when it comes to the dialogue with the unions and all of these attractiveness, attractiveness promoting measures was first of all the issue of remuneration was addressed. Uh, uh, over and above the basic salary, a beginner teacher at the primary level would be entering at a category B1 and would have a salary of around um, 91,000 CFA francs, which is just under 140 euros. Um, there would also be uh, accommodation provided for teachers if they were in a rural zone uh, and uh, if not then a housing supplement uh, of approximately 80 euros uh, was assigned um, there was also a, an on-call duty rate uh, offered to anyone working in their uh, determined area where they were deployed depending on three zones urban semi-urban or rural 
uh, which ranged from um, uh, some 32 euros up to 40 euros going from urban to more rural. The, uh, there was also a, a specific uh, payment that could be made based on the same uh, zoning. In other words, in the Zobin area, there was uh, some 15,000 CFA francs, about 23 euros semi-urban, 17,500 CFA francs, some 27 euros, and in the rural areas, around 46 euros equivalent or 30,000 uh, CFA francs. So, which means altogether that the salary for teachers uh, starting out in a rural area plus these uh, um, uh, plus these uh, additional entitlements meant that there was around 200,000 CFA francs uh, per month salary. As concerns um, uh, the, these measures for attracting and retaining teachers in Burkina Faso, the government was going to set up what we called a regionalization of uh, recruitment and deployments in 2002. Uh, you, two, you have 30 teacher... seconds, Mr. Traore. You've okay. got 30 seconds. Thank you. Okay. Uh, voilà. uh... So, with uh, with this instrument that has been set up, um, the uh, teachers leaving teacher training centres to take up a post as civil servants would, um, from now on, be able to select their own region where they wanted to uh, work and take their competitive entrance exam. Overall then, given our stats from last year, we uh, found that in the primary education we had nearly 80,000 teachers, um, some 41,000 of whom were women and 38,000, nearly 39,000 of whom were men with uh, professional qualifications. Um, in uh, post-primary and secondary, nearly 5,000 teachers uh, uh, with qualifications, the vast majority of whom were men. And uh, the, thank you, uh, Mr. the main challenge we, now we have is to handle displaced uh, teachers thanks to the current crisis situation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry I was muted. So uh, we will now call on uh, Ms. Lillian Concha from Chile, uh, who has undertaken several teacher policy reforms over the past years and has made remarkable progress concerning making the teaching profession more attractive. Can you please describe this program, uh, Ms. Kachalia? and tell us how they have impacted teacher status and ultimately retention. Uh, you have seven minutes. When you have two minutes, I will turn on my video. You'll know that you have two minutes left. Thank you. Uh, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um... My name is Lilia Concha, and I'm, in he I'm the head of the Center for Teacher Education and Pedagogical Experimentation and Research, and I'm in charge of teaching policy or teacher policy. And today I'd like to share with you about our um, teacher development system and uh, which is basically has a strategic objectives concerning attracting and retaining in-service teachers um, because we have had uh, serious problems uh, um, retaining uh, teachers and uh, attracting and recruiting younger teachers and um, teacher uh, assessments uh, that are linked to ongoing education and remuneration. The uh, teacher development system that we have dates back to 2016, which was part of our educational reform in Chile, and it meant a, a major increase in teachers' salaries. It went up by 30% on average. Currently, it's being developed um, 
and we're undertaking our first uh, assessment, uh, international assessment of the system. And uh, by law, this has to take place uh, every six years. Uh, and so we're comparing a, um, undertaking a benchmark comparison. The uh, system is, and, and the Center for Teacher Education that I work for, is the public uh, entity in charge of implementing this uh, teacher development system. And uh, the idea is uh, to ensure optimal uh, professional development and to make sure that we have attractive teacher and career pathways that enable people to continue developing in the classroom. The main principles underlying it are uh, professionalism, uh, autonomy, responsibility and ethics, uh, continued innovation and research, uh, and, um, and it's made up of uh, two subsystems, a training support system and the professional development re recognition and promotion system. There is... Uh, uh, and when we go into these two subsystems, uh, this also ties in with our ongoing assessment of the work that we are doing. In this flowchart, what you can see is the actual process or the pathway that uh, we can expect a teacher to follow during the course of their career. Uh, first, uh, uh, we have uh, the uh, teaching uh, promotion uh, where we can see primary and post-primary teachers and get them enrolled in ongoing education programs so they can continue um, uh, developing as they while they're in service as, as they teach, which we feel enriches their career. When a student uh, um, moves into the teaching profession, which could be between four and five years, in the fourth year, in other words, uh, one year uh, before they actually start their teaching career, we have a diagnostic uh, um, operation which uh, is done through the university system so that just before they specialize and get their actual degree we can identify any areas that need more work we can focus on uh, on upskilling them in the required areas then uh, once they commence uh, the uh, once they end the, that uh, initial training, the pre-service training, and start uh, uh, working a, a, as a teacher, they're entitled to ongoing courses um, and uh, mentorship uh, in, in, in the first years of teaching. And these mentors are experienced teachers, and uh, they have uh, uh, very good uh, teacher development skills, and they have been accredited uh, uh, um, uh, so as to undertake this mentorship, and uh, and they have the one-on-one -on -one skills that they need to do this. And this is to make sure that the first two years of, te of a teacher's professional life are, are successful, that the new teachers uh, uh, are more likely to stay in the profession and feel safe and secure in that, because um, the there is a the we have the greatest problems of attrition with the with the first initial years of teaching and that is why we're focusing on these first two years of uh, professional life then we do need we do recognize the um, the the need for ongoing education for all of our teaching staff what's more in our legal system in the 1993 law uh, as part of the Geneva, we understand the legal specificities and how the local specificities have to be built into the teacher development plans at the local level. So they have to be relevant to the region in which each uh, uh, teacher is working, the, their level, and, uh, and the administer, administrators in the schools, the teachers, the um, the regional uh, entities and the public institutions uh, that work uh, with those are all part of that same system. Moreover, we have an assessment system that until now uh, in the for public schools has had uh, 
uh, five rounds of assessment, and we have uh, uh, decided to reduce that to two um, uh, with, with one overarching uh, assessment uh, system for uh, anybody working under this uh, teacher development system. And one of the takeaways that we've learned from this experience is that uh, investing in assessments uh, um, uh, if, uh, has to be all tied back in uh, to the um, uh, to the development needs. Otherwise, it becomes a too heavy an exercise and a bit uh, overwhelming for the teachers. In other words, it's got to, there's got to be a balance between promoting improvement without actually uh, overburdening our, our teachers. And so that's why we reduced it from five to two. In accordance with the outcomes of those assessments, um, uh, depending on, uh, how, you, Ms. Ms. on, on seniority your, and how long the teacher has been working. Up. Your time is up, please uh, I summarize and disclose, please. Sí, muy bien. Uh, Very well, thank you. So I just wanted to end by pointing out that depending on the outcome of the uh, assessments, um, uh, there is a connection with uh, promotion and remuneration. So teachers that have had an unfavorable uh, evaluation are able to continue their capacity development to take part in courses uh, but after two rounds of assessment if 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 they don't manage to improve over two rounds of assessment and training then we need to reassess so we have the teacher training de uh, development okay, program which no. is uh, connected to the thank remuneration you, thank, thank you. you very much Th thank you very much we we have to move on otherwise we we will not finish. But thank you very much, uh, Ms. Concha, for the intervention. The next speaker uh, from Indonesia will be Dr. Iwan Siahil. Uh, Indonesia has been increasing teacher recruitment recently uh, to deal with its teacher gaps, upwards of a million teachers. Since Dr. Iwan cannot be here today, uh, let's hear from Indonesia's experience through a recorded video, which will cover the country's experience to improve the attraction, recruitment and retention in the teacher workforce. Shall we have the video from Indonesia? Welcome. Thank you. You have seven minutes. Hello, good afternoon from Indonesia. Um, my name is Iwan Chalil. I'm the DG for uh, Early Childhood Education, uh, Basic Education and Secondary Education. In this occasion, I'd like to share a little bit about our strategies and experience in attracting and retaining quality teachers in Indonesia. Uh, let me share uh, my presentation to all of you. So uh, my presentation is divided into four parts. The first one is about the teacher need analysis. The second one, uh, focusing on pre-service teacher education. The third one is about recruitment of more than 1 million contract teachers to government schools. And the last one is about in-service professional development. Uh, let me start from the first part, which is about teacher need analysis. In our context in Indonesia, uh, we don't really have the problem of teacher shortage. We have teachers in our school system. However, the decentralized governance has created a lot of problems in our uh, implementation. Uh, for instance, uh, we have um, a lack of uh, recruitment standards that then translate into poor quality uh, and also unequal distribution of teachers because the decentralized governance, the local gov uh, governments have uh, different approaches and also uh, commit levels of commitment in terms of uh, distributing teachers uh, equally. We have 552 local governments at the moment, so that's not easy to manage. Um, and this is a puzzle that we continuously uh, have to uh, uh, deal with. Uh, but how we are dealing with that, so uh, let me go through the second part. The first one is we try to match the supply and demand through the integration of uh, uh, teacher recruitment system, uh, which is more like national and also standardized 
with pre-service teacher education, meaning the teachers who are retiring uh, are going to be a part of our plan uh, to be replaced by new teachers that have to go through the pre-service teacher education. And we also have revamped the curriculum of the pre-service teacher education to make it more practice oriented. And we uh, attract uh, and we involve practitioners to be the instructors in pre-service teacher education because we realize the problem of the theory and practice gap is quite fundamental across the globe in terms of preparing teachers. So we uh, are trying to solve this problem, one of which by uh, involving practitioners into the teacher preparation program. And we also uh, upgrade the quality of our teacher educators by providing scholarships uh, so that they can continuous, uh, they can continue to study in top uh, university programs uh, in across the world, especially around uh, the key areas in transformation, especially how to teach literacy, uh, numeracy, uh, special education, and also uh, how to be better leaders uh, in the school system and so on. So that is in terms of the pre-service, and the second and the third one. We recruit uh, more than 1 million uh, uh, contract teachers to government schools. So like I said, uh, we actually uh, don't have the problem of teacher shortages, uh, but we have the problem of uh, uh, lack of standardized recruitment system. As, as a result, then the local schools recruit by themselves, then this is, has created a problem of the poor working conditions and also the poor quality of our teachers. So therefore, since two years ago, the government of the Republic of Indonesia has started to uh, implement more standardized recruitment mechanism. So then we can attract teachers with st a certain standard of quality, and then they can be employed with better working conditions. And also uh, with uh, the status of government uh, school teachers, they also have better opportunities for professional development and career progression. For instance, they can assume leadership position uh, and then therefore can uh, be more involved in our transformation. And also with this recruitment mechanism, we also uh, 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 handle the problem of uh, distribution of teachers because we try to fulfill uh, at the same time uh, recruitment of these teachers and place them to uh, areas uh, where uh, there are no teachers. So therefore, we hope that this will solve the problem of teacher distribution. At the moment, we have recruited up uh, close to 600,000 uh, uh, teachers and we're aiming to continue to do so and hopefully can, we can finish this by next year. And the fourth one, in terms of the in-service professional development, uh, yes, we believe in facilitating continuous professional development, but we, uh, our strategy at the moment, uh, especially at the beginning, is to focus on creating a new generation of school leaders. We have shifted the focus of our school leadership from focusing on administrative duties to focusing uh, to become leaders of learning, leaders of transformation or innovation. Uh, we select them uh, very rigorously and then we also train them very carefully with this new mindset. And uh, they, once they graduate, they become school principals and school supervisors and we provide them the autonomy to innovate. And we hope that they become the change agents in their ecosystem, uh, uh, facilitating change and also empowering other educators to be involved in our transformation. And we have implemented the, uh, the strategy of uh, PLC, professional learning community. We believe this is actually the game changer. So it's not like the individual brilliance of individual teachers that actually make the difference, but it's actually communities of teachers, of educators working together with the same spirit uh, to serve the students and also um, to learn from each other, sharing and collaborating. We believe that actually this is what the practitioners need. They can share wisdoms of practice and this uh, will, uh, con uh, will help them to accelerate the change in their own schools. Uh, and the, the, the next part in terms of professional development is providing technological support. We utilize technology to scale up and accelerate the progress. We have created a teacher facing platform. This is something that is very fundamental in our technology design. We decided not to create student facing platform, but we focus on teacher uh, facing platform because we believe teachers matter a lot. Teacher is very key and fundamental in the process of learning and in education. 
At the moment, more than 3 million teachers have subscribed uh, to this platform uh, out of our 3.3 uh, uh, million teachers. So it's almost all of our teachers are here uh, on this platform. Uh, there are more than 3.3 million downloads and also they share best practices with each other. More than 500,000 best practices have been shared and the professional learning communities also happen on this platform. More than three, uh, 30,000 at the moment. And we are at the moment, the, the last part, transforming educators' talent management system. At the moment, we are finalizing our uh, talent management teacher uh, system for teachers in which we're trying to focus on key behaviors in performance. For instance, how to create a space for the principal and the school teachers to talk about teaching and learning by uh, maybe school, uh, by the classroom observation, uh, and also with uh, targeted rubrics so that they can continuously uh, talk about uh, how to improve uh, the, the learning um, in the quality of learning for the students in that classroom. And also we incentivize the culture of learning among educators. Dr. So Iwan, your time is designed for the talent management system, we are trying to find uh, simple but effective ways to incentivize the behavior, the habit of learning, sharing, and collaborating among our teachers. I think that's all that I can share uh, with all of you for in terms of attracting and retaining quality teachers in Indonesia. Happy World Teachers Day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Iwan, for your intervention. Without any further ado, we'll go on to China, Dr. Minshual Zhang. China has been implementing measures to attract high quality teachers across China, including rural and remote areas. Dr. Zhang will now share the experience in China to understand how over the past 20 years, the quality of education has been rising. Moreover, he will explain how China has worked to ensure both quality and quantity of teachers in remote areas is sustained. You have seven minutes. When I turn on my video, you have two minutes. When I unmute, you have 30 seconds. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, thank you, Chair. Now I try to say some cases. Yeah, please, next slide. I cannot control. Oh, yeah. Yeah, please, the, the map. Yeah, China, China, the map, please, the map. Yeah, China is a very large developing country. So we have a more than, I mean, 1.4 billion people. And economic and, and education development is in very rapid, but still in disparity. On one hand, Shanghai and several provinces have attained top scores in PISA. That means the Program for International Students Assessment, uh, organized by OECD since, 1909, uh, since uh, 2009, and a very good result also in TELUS, Teacher and Learning International Survey, also by the OECD. But while we demand over 30 uh, 300,000 high quality te new te school teachers every year, especially in the vast rural, remote and mountain areas. Yeah, so here we can uh, see the table. Every year we aid a lot of uh, teachers. Uh, in the year 2000, we have 11 million, but now we have 16 million, over 16 million teachers, all right, full-time teachers. So how to recruit high quality people to a large force of teaching profession and to retain them and develop them in their lifelong career. This is always the very serious challenge for us in the past, now and in the future. Therefore, we set up a very strong policy system with many effective innovations but here, I only spend 77 minutes to introduce the three cases of a teacher policy. Please, next slide. Yeah. First is a free teacher education programs. In China, we have more than 100 teachers' college and universities. But we try to attract the top students in the top universities. So the, in the year 2007, we developed a new policy called the free teacher education programs. That means 
the national, six national normal universities, they are top research universities in China, in, uh, in, enrolled less than uh, 10,000 and government granted student teachers. And the next year, more than 10 provincial normal universities also enrolled more than uh, 10,000 free teacher education program students. So with the provincial governments, the university I were worked, Shanghai Normal University is one of them. And in the year 2018, more and more universities joining to this part. So now we have more than 50 local universities and normal teachers to join that, try to enroll, attract the government granted teacher education program programs and the student teachers will be studied there. So why we should do that? Because we want more rural and poor family students who can freely enter and stand it in the top universities. And then the nation, the second of the nation, especially the middle and western China, recruit high quality teachers from the top institutions. That means the top teachers, top students. Then the third, the local and the rural schools will have high quality teachers graduated from the top universities. In this way, we also try to, I mean, reform the pre-service teacher education. So those programs are used as the pilots. Where we try to realize those of our goals or say objectives, we try to have several measurements or say measures to realize that. First, only top students who, whose score in the national college entry examinations above the minimum passing systems to that top university could be admitted. That means all top students come to the top universities and become teachers. Then the three sides, that means the students themselves, the provincial governments and the universities that have their contract. So the government will give them the money for their life, but they will come back to their countryside. Then the third, these students will join the tuition fever, I mean, free tuition, and also get a grant for living expenses and the free dormitories during their bachelor degree study for teacher education program, usually for four years. Then the fourth, during their studies, the students should learn a lot in the different parts, usually six, general education, academic disciplinary based courses, and also teaching professional courses, including pedagogy, psychology, and teaching skills. And of course, four, they should have the school teaching practice. Then write their graduation dissertation and also pass the national teacher certificate examination. Only after that, they can become the good teachers. Then upon their graduation, they should come back to their original home provinces and worked as the grassroots school teachers in country towns or rural schools for six years. But when during their study, they can have the master degree courses as a pastime students. So they worked there and also continue their professional development. As a result, during the 10 years from uh, 2007 to 2017, more than 100,000, I mean, free teacher education group of students graduated from the six top universities and 80,000 graduates, they went back to their home province and even worked in the rural schools. Then second, from the year 2018, every year we got 600,000 student teachers, they are admitted. And so we have a large teacher force now. And then already among them, 300,000 government teacher education, government granted teacher education graduates 
already come to schools and their home, home country and the rural areas. Next. Next, please. Hey, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yeah. Dr. Uh, yeah. Zhang. We've, yeah, uh, then your time when, is up. Oh, yes. When, when yes, they come thank to you the very rural much. schools, they will get the rural teachers' support, financial support, uh, once for their living subsidy. And they, on the other side, their housing allowance. Please, next. Just an next uh, uh, I'm next sorry, week. Dr. Yang. Oh, We've yes. We've got to move. And then now. We've got they to will move get now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The pension for their salary. So, in this way, we recruit them, retain them, and ask them to Thank work you. their lifelong time. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, sorry to really put you under pressure. We need, we need to move. Thank yes. you. Our last speaker will be from the World Bank, Mr. Ezekiel Molina. Uh, today he will speak from a multi-country perspective on what lies behind the success or failure of teacher policies, how teachers experience these policies, and how systems can scale and sustain these policies. The floor is yours, uh, Mr. Molina. You have got seven minutes. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Great to hear all these distinguished speakers on this crucial topic for the future of not just the teaching profession and education, but of society as a whole. Um, in our upcoming report, Making Teacher Policy Work, we ask ourselves why, despite the growing evidence on effective teacher policies, like the ones uh, we've heard presented today, we still do not observe most countries implementing these policies successfully. So the report argues that we need to go beyond the theory of what works on teacher policy to more practically support and motivate teachers in different contexts to adopt what works while making sure that it can be implemented at a scale and sustained over time. So the report made two key takeaways for policymakers on how to design and implement uh, teacher policies more effective. The first one is to um, that it's very important to move away the focus from simply looking at what changes are teachers and students expected to do, uh, to also look out to how to best support them to achieve those outcomes. So for example, it's not just to print in a new curriculum, or uh, asking teachers to apply to new positions, but thinking how we're going to get those best teachers to apply, how we're going to get teachers to be able to implement this new curriculum. So to do so, policymakers should ask themselves three questions. Is the change clear for teachers? Is the change doable for teachers? Are we asking something uh, that is reasonable? Is the change rewarding for teachers? To increase the likelihood that the given policy will have its intended impact, we first need to identify what changes are needed, diagnose the barriers that stand in the way of those changes, and finally put in place strategies to mitigate these barriers. Listening and understanding how teachers experience these policies in a given context is the first critical step toward making teacher policy work. But of course, this is just what we call the individual level uh, barriers but there are also system level barriers. For that, we need to move the focus just from what works to what works, but is also implementable at a scale and can be sustained over time, which is the second critical step to making sure teacher policy uh, works uh, for countries. To identify what elements may impact sustainability and a scale of the teacher policy in a particular context, policymakers should ask themselves three questions. The first is, do we have adequate resources, funding, technical and management capacity to implement that policy at a scale and over time? You may be able to implement the policy in a pilot level, but to implement it at a scale, you may not have the funding, technical and management capacity to do it. Do we have, and the second question is, do we have the enabling political environment to implement that policies? In other words, have we built a trust and coalition with relevant stakeholders to ensure that the critical elements of the policy will be preserved over time? We see time and time again that countries uh, go ahead with a policy that may work, but then change it after a year to change it back again after a year, and then it's like, oh, this policy doesn't work. Well, 
it doesn't work because it needs time to time to work. So for that, you need to make sure that the policies that are implemented are those that have a broader consensus in society, uh, so they don't uh, so, so they are stable over time. And finally, do we have the data and data systems able to help prioritize, adapt, and iterate on the policy and make sure that we can improve over time? Next slide, please. Let me now go to some of the examples of uh, applying this framework uh, to attract investment to teaching and deploying teachers where they are most needed. So as we said before, we see two main barriers or constraints. One is at the individual level for the adoption and one is at the system level. I will provide some examples, uh, but but of course there is much more to discuss in each of these uh, in each of these examples. And I'm happy that some of these, some of the ones that I have have already been mentioned before by the previous presenters. So in order to attract the best into teaching, one of the main constraints, as it as was highlighted by Carlos and Lilia, was first is that um the prestige of the teacher profession uh, has been falling. Uh, during all these years. And the second is that in many cases, the salary that teachers get is much lower than another, pro than another profession. So how, the, in order to get the best to apply to the teaching profession, we need to make it more rewarding. And there have been campaigns in Chile, Elige Educar, and in UK, um, as, well as, as well as providing incentives for tuition at teacher college for high performing students in South Africa and Shanghai. But of course, that is part of the equation. Then when you go to the system level, you need to make it politically acceptable. You need to make sure that there is enough funding uh, for this. Uh, and what some countries have done is build room for additional budget of education and ensuring the pay is competitive by bundling reforms. So, uh, so, for example, in Peru, they tie evaluation to uh, additional salaries uh, to try to get a larger coalition, political coalition, to accept the policy. Uh, but of course, I'm just talking about political acceptable. You also have to think about operational feasibility and having data systems within this. But it's, I'm just providing examples. In terms of deployment, and I'm sure I will also run out of time, so I will at least say one, uh, that is... You need to make it clear. You also need to make it doable. Let me uh, use the example of make it doable. So ensure that teachers find find it doable to apply to the positions. Uh, for example, in Ecuador, they develop a platform uh, to help teachers that wanted to uh, to apply. And in, in that platform, they make more salient the harder to staff schools. Uh, that way, uh, they got you know, in a very cheap way, because they didn't have to spend so much money, they were able to get much more many teachers applied to those schools that may have not applied if they if this system wasn't created in that way. And of course, in order to make this work, they had to work on revamping their software and, and their platform and make it feasible uh, operationally. Uh, and they, you know, they, they, they actually, partner with the right people to to, de to develop this platform. Um, because I haven't been caught, I will go to my last example. Uh, that is also making it clear. Sometimes the process of deployment is not transparent is, uh, and it's also not clear in, in terms of what teachers need to do when those uh, new positions will come out. Uh, and again, and making that, that again, is not, uh, it's not a reform that is so so costly, so costly could also lead to better results. Um, and uh, and of course, when you go, this is an individual level, but on the system level, you need to make sure that you have data systems to check uh, whether teacher understand the process, whether you need to change the platform, whether you need to do something else to make sure that that this uh, is useful Thank for you. teachers. Thank you, Mr. Great. Molina. Thank Thanks. So just to Thank note one thing, it's, it's, you have to look at these two things. One is individual level for teachers to adopt the policy, one in the system level to make sure that they work at the scale and can be sustained over time. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Molina, for your intervention.
uh, we unfortunately don't have time for us to take questions, but if you do have questions, please uh, put it in the chat and we will try and respond to the question in the chat. At this point in time for the next 30 minutes, we will all go to our breakaway sessions where uh, in the sessions, the participants can then have more in-depth uh, discussion, uh, share experiences in their own countries, and also learn uh, from others. Uh, the groups are language-based. There'll be a, an English uh, group that will be moderated by Peter Wallet. The French group will be moderated by Fatou Niang. Uh, the Spanish will be uh, by Shimena Rubio and Arabic by Maran Algohani. Each moderator will be asking the main questions related to the workshop objectives. And these are what are the main challenges across the region to better attract and retain teachers? Which policies, practice, and strategies have led to improvements? in attracting and retaining qualified teachers. Thirdly, what were the key enabling conditions that allowed teacher policy and practice to produce positive change and scaling up? And the last question, what critical partnerships within the country and more widely in the region or globally are essential for supporting and sustaining change? So each of the groups will nominate a rapporteur who will synthesize the information and report back in plenary. As we go into our different groups, uh, we will be back after 30 minutes. All of the best in your breakaway sessions. Thank you. So I, I just want to reiterate the, um, uh, the questions are very quickly around what are some of the com common and distinct challenges uh, in, the, in the countries and different regions? What are the policies, practices that have been quite effective and, and evidence-based in order to, um, to leverage change? Uh, enabling conditions, of course, that help to foster this and as well around critical partnerships. So um, I'm just going to open up the, uh, open up the, the space to uh, anyone's there. I, I think it's also be good to have a, a rapporteur as well. We can sort of select that person quickly. Uh, Martin, would you like to be a rapporteur for the group? Sure thing. That'd be great, yeah, thank you. So I'll, I'll just open up maybe that first question and we can address the issue around common challenges uh, within countries. And um, I'm just, we've heard a little bit about, you know, a, a number of issues around um, the lack of uh, capacity for uh, teacher training, the, the um, uh, financial constraints, um, uh, a number of issues related to, you know, lack of social dialogue. So I'm just going to start it there and, and allow someone to, to respond um, who would like to start the conversation. Well, I, I can jump in, Peter. I'll pick up the issue that um, I started with in terms of partnership, partnerships, because you asked that question about partnerships. I think it, it's critical that people are having a conversation with the teacher unions in the country. Uh, and we've done some work with UNESCO on professional standards, which should be set by the profession as well. And um, I know there's, um, we, we have a joint framework with UNESCO around this. Um, I think that w where there is a problem, and we've got a status of teachers survey out at the moment we're going to publish next year, it's very clear from the early data that there is a huge issue around special needs teachers, that there are a huge issue around the world in funding. And I think there was this was picked up by a couple of your um, panelists in terms of not paying teachers enough. And there was a report that just came out of the US the other day which explained that there is a really serious problem with um, graduates in education getting so much less than graduates in all other um, areas. Uh, and I think that you've got to approach this through an understanding of teacher status, and, and that's an issue which is set at the national level. That's a few to get you started with. Yeah, no, thank you for those important reflections. I, I think that's, that's a really important feedback. So I'd like to, bouncing off the partnership idea, 
Um, maybe we can come back a little bit though and talk about some of the, the common challenges and, and what are some of the particular challenges that other countries have experienced um, that they'd like to reflect on and, and sort of say, and maybe even sort of, you know, and throw in also uh, on top of that, you know, what, what were some of the effective policy responses that seem to actually uh, be used effectively to counter that? And so I'll, I'll just um, look for someone else who'd like to grab the, the microphone. Oh, yeah. Anybody who would like to jump in? Oh, Dr. Yes. Zhang, please. Yeah, yeah yes. go ahead. Yeah, I think. Of course, the teachers should have their competence framework, but the most important is the finance. So in China, I think in the last 40 years, especially in the last 30 years, China had the law say that the government at least spend 4% uh, of the GDP into education. This is first in the law. Then second, we have a three increment. The first increment, the uh, public expenditure of the education should be increased quicker than the government expenses in all. That means if the government spend 15%, uh, then education at least 15.5 or 16. So that means in the government expenditure, you should be quicker than the, the increment than the government expenses. This is the first. Then the second, the teacher's salary should be no less, even higher than the, uh, than the salary of the civil servants. This is the second. The third is the expenditure of per student should be increased every year. So this increment ensure the teachers have their better working condition, have better salary, and have the better future. Because of that, more and more young people were coming to it. And then you can say, we have the requirements. We should have the examination. If you have the examination and the framework competences, if no people like to come into that, no matter how beautiful of the competence framework, useless. So if you put the government, the money into the government, the government laws, then the local government have to do that. Even they borrow the money to pay the teacher's salary. Of course, if the local government is very poor in the poor uh, rural area, the central government will consider it. If you worked hard, tried very, in every way, the central government will try to transfer the, I mean, the, 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 the rates into the poor areas. Yeah. So I think the finance is very important, or say the most important, the first priority. This is my answer. Right? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Zhang. You make some excellent points, and and um, in fact, I mean, we're looking at our at our fact sheet. We know that um, uh, the salaries are a huge issue, and and they're not competitive in many cases, which you know which is a huge driver for teachers out of the profession. Um, yeah. So thank you for that. I don't want to take too much time paraphrasing. So I'm going to go on. I see some other hands up. For instance, I see um, uh, a pre from uh, Indonesia. Please, a pre. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Uh, thank you, colleague for this opportunity. Well, uh, I also would like to echo what uh, our colleague from China has mentioned about that. But I also would like to underscore that actually related with the finance, uh, there's also another thing that we need to cover. And this is maybe quite typical. This is what been mentioned by our colleague from Chile, if not mistaken. This is related with uh, how actually politically the policy also support the transformation or the policy for teacher uh, that's been built by the government is not going to take time. I mean, uh, if we have, for instance, that we have this uh, uh, policy for teacher related with how we attract young 
people to come into the profession, but the terms in terms of politically is not really quite supportive, no matter how strong the finance is, it will be another bottleneck for us in terms of uh, real uh, comprehensive implementation. I just would like to mention something related to what happened in Indonesia, uh, in the context of Indonesia. First, uh, actually, like our DG has mentioned, uh, this, this is a very strong emphasis. He's saying that, that Indonesia doesn't have any uh, teacher shortage issue. But in terms of what he's saying, is uh, we, it is very quite true. In terms of what we need is actually, we kind of uh, shortage in uh, quality teachers and how we manage this one and how we need to start from what we have from our uh, youngster. I also interested in, 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 in one of the presenter uh, 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 idea in terms of uh, teacher attrition. And this is becomes very uh, another uh, classic issue that we need to overcome in terms of how we attract young people. So I uh, just would like to echo the importance of finance and the uh, politically uh, stable and commitment from a higher official to promote this uh, uh, policy because we do also underscore that uh, uh, if we would like to raise this policy, I also still remember that in, in TTF, uh, it's really highlighted that the teacher's voice is most important to bring them into the uh, policy formulation and into the implementation as well. So I just want to bring that issue for our first uh, discussion. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, thank you very much, Apri. Um, I appreciate those comments. And we know that in Indonesia, there's a, a massive recruitment going on up to 1 million teachers. So um, unless there's another question right now, maybe I'd like a follow-up question, just in terms of uh, some of the effective policies that Indonesia has identified in terms of uh, also um, not only you know increasing the, the quantity, but also uh, particular measures increasing the quality of the new recruits um, uh, in this current uh, period. Maybe you could reflect on that a bit. Thank you, uh, Peter, for that uh, 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 comments or, 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 or uh, the update. Now, I really appreciate that. Yes, indeed, uh, we have this uh, a, a strategy, uh, a strategy that that our our government from our uh, minister has actually developed. Uh, we're seeing the balance uh, in, in terms of what we need from providing quality teacher and providing teachers in terms of quantity. So we started from what we call actually uh, pre-service teacher. So pre-service teacher is highlighted in, 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 in the design of the curriculum that highlight the uh, practice oriented. And, and we also highlight the importance of the four competency of our teachers. And we also uh, put the highlight on not uh, like a, a high risk uh, test or assessment, but we're looking at more like a formative uh, assessment that looking at how actually the progress and what we can have intervention to to have an immediate uh, uh, intervention to improve it. So, but we do understand in Indonesia, uh, we have also in-service teachers. Now this in-service teacher, we are trying to limit it in, or narrow it down uh, in terms of what uh, we call or we familiarly known as contract teachers. This is another issue that we try to build because when we try to have this uh, issue of uh, both hand and we try to put it in equal uh, treatment, we see that we need to, uh, this is a very uh, strong emphasis from our government or from the ministry that we, that we appreciate our teachers now though they already have become teacher for so long and we do understand that uh, there's a, a lot of expectation for them but in terms of in service teacher we also need to highlight that they have their needs in terms of their social well-being so we also would like to highlight this by having this certification uh, but we also have a high expectation from our pre service teacher which is usually we uh, we we targeted uh, our uh, our uh, youngster to become a teacher to enter the profession so this is kind of balancing the need 
uh, for quality and quantity. There will be more issue on that in terms of how we need to attract also uh, practitioner into the classroom. And this has become also interesting issue that we also to, to bring up in, in and onto the surface because oh, we highlight the importance of professional learning community. Uh, so later on, it's not just going to rely on the government, but we also try to emphasize the need for all participants, all uh, elements from our society to focus and help on this issue. So we and in terms of what we call as a, when we talk about the quality assurance, that's become our all responsibility. So maybe that's may have a little bit information or respond to your question, Peter. Thank you. You're still mute, Peter, sorry. Peter, you're still on mute. We can I see you. Martin Henry has his hand up, but I would like to also, uh, I think there's a lot of other people in the room that have not spoken. So I'd like to give an opportunity to others to uh, share in on some of these questions. Those questions being again about common challenges, um, effective policies that uh, evidence-based uh, led to uh, positive change, issues around partnerships, and of course, around um, um, conditions that sort of fostered uh, some kind of change or scaling up of programs. So I'd like to, to go to someone, I, Martin, I know, you, <laughs> I know you're waiting patiently, but I'd like to open it up to someone else in the room uh, if there's someone who had asked something they'd like to share. Well, I'll let people think about what they'd like to share in a moment. And in Martin, I'll let you respond uh, to what you've heard. Thanks, Peter. Um, yeah, I'd just like to support the um, intervention from China. I think that they were very clear in terms of the importance of actually counting the numbers. Um, we need to be crystal clear. And um, we've got a campaign on um, fun public education which this fits in perfectly with actually, in terms of being able to be uh, clear uh, and uh, precise about how much it costs, because you can't make a change in the education system without the investment. Um, I just wanna pick up another couple of things which have come up. Um, to improve teacher quality, which is the question you asked, Peter, it's absolutely critical that we don't take approach that blames teachers or that lowers the status of teachers. And, and we do get into trouble in many countries where there is a discourse around the quality of teachers that's not based on the right um, foundations. And I think Indonesia was quite clear about some of the things that are critical for this. And I do agree with them that you need permanent contracts for teachers. You need a work-life balance scenario which um, it supports the well-being of teachers. And, and I think that the... The whole workload issue hasn't come up yet, and we do need to highlight it that with a crowded curriculum and with increasing demands from um, national assessment systems and from um, summative assessment and, and high stakes assessment, that there needs to be a gear change towards more formative assessment that focuses on the relationship between teacher and student focused around learning. And, and we haven't yet talked about learning in this workshop. And, and I think that we've got to be really, really clear about how we build that. I do think that um, pre-service education is important, but it works on a continuum with in-service education. And, and I do agree that professional learning communities are crucial. We've got a formative assessment project in six countries where we're looking at um, how learning circles can support teachers with good facilitation and with external support from research. And, and I think you've got to take an evidence-based approach. I can't see hands, Peter, so tell me if you can see a hand, um, I'm happy to stop. Um, I can always add more, of course. Uh, no, I don't see a hand right now, but thank you for those reflections. I mean, you know, we know that, um, you know, we know that the first, you know, few years are really, really critical. And, you know, in this meeting is really about retaining teachers, it's mitigating attrition. And we know that teachers often leave in the first two, three, four or five years. Not only that is it is hugely costly, of course, but we also know it has impacts on learning. So um, we know that this um, um, 
th there are sort of incremental um, change. There's incremental learning that teachers also undergo in the first few years, and this actually has. Um, um, there's evidence to show that this is actually really important for students' learning and retention and, and uh, academic achievement. So all these things play in together and, and are interrelated, which is why it's so important we really talk about how to just, of course, not just improve uh, the supply of, qu of quality teachers, but also just uh, teachers themselves uh, to, to develop and to professionally develop into better and stronger teachers. Uh, so thank you for those comments from everyone. Uh, I think we have maybe just a few more moments, moments but um, I'd like to maybe talk a bit more about uh, maybe a few more examples of effective policies that have been implemented in countries that where there's evidence base to show that this was really kind of a powerful thing that countries implemented that resulted in, in, in uh, mitigating attrition, uh, improving retention, um, building the teacher force and making it more sustainable long-term. I don't know if there's uh, other members in the room that would like to address that because I see a whole bunch of participants, but I not, not everyone has participated. So. Uh, please don't be shy to put up your hand and to contribute to the conversation. But we only have a couple more moments, so I will let uh, Henry or Dr. Zhang or anyone else contribute who would like to. Uh, Martin, if you'd like to maybe give some final words and maybe around partnerships, because we haven't really talked about the whole issue of partnerships very much. Sure, I, I think that the issue you raised about policy is critical as well. Um, we, we've always argued that teacher policy, you have to work with the teachers unions on. So in, in terms of having that relationship with the, the democratic and structured organizations which represent teacher perspectives, then you're able to have a better understanding of what happens in the classroom, because we know that teacher unions have a better view of what's going on in the classroom than anybody else. Uh, and ultimately, that's really important. Um, I do want to go back to the China comment as well. And I thought this was really useful about they should be paid the same as civil servants. Um, we could probably count on one hand the number of countries where that happens. So I think if you can extend the ability to do that, that, that is really important. Um, I do think that the, where teachers sit in terms of the academy and the relationship to research and evidence is also important and that teachers should be able to do action research as part of their working jobs because you can't learn something at one stage of your career and it lasts for the whole of your life. You've got to keep refreshing and reconnecting and working with your colleagues to do it. Thank you very much, Martin. Um, Beren, would you like to come in with a comment? I also see maybe Elisabetta Cipriani would like to comment as well, but Boren, please go ahead. No, I think building on Henry point, I think the social, because the partnership is, is different from social dialogue. Social dialogue means that uh, there are representative of teachers in particular in this case, and, and uh, I think we have to go back. Yeah, I think if there's any other comments, we can make those also in the in the in the room when we okay. go back to plenary. Thank so, thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Yes, I think the, when the government have the high pay, then let a student, uh, let a teachers to have the lifelong learning and the lifelong development. So, not only the high pay, but should let them to have the. Uh, I mean, career ladders, let them to go. Of course, in the process, uh, try to provide them the in service training. So let them to go together, the high pay, the uh, development, and also the in, uh, in, this training, in service training. So in this way, the teachers uh, will try to know that. Thank you. Thank you very much, colleagues. So we've had uh, breakout sessions that have been mostly linguistic rather than than regional, and we will hear back from the rapporteurs of those sessions in two minutes time, what were some of the main uh, messages, some of the key takeaways in terms of what is needed to make the profession more attractive, what the needs are at country level. And I see Lilia, we can begin with the, with the Spanish group. Please Lilia, you have two minutes. Yeah, are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. 
I would say that as concerns the main challenges uh, about attracting and retaining teachers, um, it's uh, important to do more to rebalance um, what is uh, support and training for teachers and not only pressure, performance indicators, assessment, etc. Um, it take due uh, stock of the complexity of the um, of the issues of uh, bullying and violence, for example. It's one of the most difficult uh, aspects uh, and uh, things for teachers to deal with in the exercise of their duties and to ensure solidarity so that um, teachers generally uh, feel supported. In other words, uh, spend more effort on um, on uh, on cooperation and collaboration among teachers teachers ensure that in the initial years of, of teacher training that there is enough support and also uh, to keep uh, developing uh, institution, inter-institutional um, uh, teaching policy. For example, we ensure that the legislation uh, and uh, public policy is uh, with a holistic approach. Uh, um, it's not only at the at the state level, but to have a key uh, specificities uh, covered to make sure that there's enough funding, stable um, uh, stable uh, financial uh, support, and making sure that the policies uh, are holistic ensuring that there's outreach to universities, NGOs, and a, a multi-sectoral approach, make sure that the policies are relevant, that, uh, that they really are grounded in the uh, realities at the school level so that they'll be long lasting. Thank you, thank you very much. That's perfect, thank you so much, Lilia. Thank you very much for summarizing all of that and thanks to all of the participants in that breakout group. Henry online. Thank you, Martin. If you can uh, walk us through the conclusions of the group in two minutes time, please. Sure. It's a, it's a tight ask, Carlos, in two minutes. But um, we had some very specific um, examples. We had um, a commitment to public spending on education. And the point was made by China that education should uh, have increased spending. It should increase more than anywhere else. So there's got to be um, over 4% spent on education and expenditure per student should be increased every year as well. This will improve teacher working conditions. Um, frameworks and professional standards are important and should be negotiated with teachers unions. And we have a joint framework with UNESCO people can get hold of. Um, if local government is too poor, central government must step in was an important point for the rural areas. Um, there was feedback about the importance of finance from Indonesia as well, the, the, the importance of making sure that teacher quality is maintained by having a very um, a good pre-service and a lifelong learning guarantee for teachers so that they're able to access good and um, collaborative professional learning throughout their career that has career pathways. And there are some systems which do this particularly well. Teachers should be able to stay in the classroom as well um, as to become um, leaders and take up leadership positions. Um, uh, teacher well-being was highlighted as a very important issue. Um, teacher work-life balance um, and well-qualified and well-supported teachers must be supported in the national consciousness by having a clear and well-established status that enables them to be able to live out their lives with the sort of salaries that are going to support them. And the issue of salary came up a, a number of times, actually, um, and that the importance of partnership is critical as well, um, that in order to maintain partnerships, people have, must work with teachers' unions and, and should work with them on developing teacher policy so that it doesn't, to quote Yusuf Saeed, arrive like thunder, Curriculum should not arrive like thunder and neither should teacher policy. So if we can make sure that we do involve our teachers and our unions, we're going to have much better education systems. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you. To, thanks to you, Martin, for that very, very quick and very uh, concise report of a, of a very complex issue. We, we take note of the most salient points. 
Thank you. Thank you, Martin, very much once again. Uh, we're going to turn to French. I believe it's a colleague from uh, Eval EU that will be taking the floor uh, to guide us through the most salient points of the discussion uh, in the French group. Uh, I don't know if uh, she can hear us. Uh, oui. <laughs> Bonjour oui. à tous. Oui, uh, allez-y, s'il vous plaît. Yes, please proceed. I'm sorry, I don't actually have access to the chat. I'm Evelyne Lejouf Duvert, and I'm in charge of training and of the Evalu uh, Association, which works uh, in partnership with the Erasmus uh, agencies at the EU level and the uh, Alliance Francaise. Forgive me, Evelyne, but uh, are you able to turn your video on? That would be better. One moment. Thank you. Perfect. Yes, Candy, proceed. Two minutes. So, in fact, because of technical issues, we were not able to find all of the answers to the challenges. What we were able to do was basically list the challenges. We identified the issue of teacher salaries. Yeah, I would say that's the number one challenge. And then the material conditions uh, for uh, teachers and their jobs and the conditions of teaching. It's true that it's really important to ensure that they have all the teaching materials uh, that are required, that the classroom is uh, uh, has a suitable learning environment, um, and uh, that there are uh, no problems with, uh, with uh, challenges to authority or other. And then another issue that we discussed was the the need to recognize teacher status um, and this is uh, both on the level of the state uh, and also at the societal level and unfortunately as regards as the view that a society has of teachers we're still a very consumerist society and in a consumer society uh, salary basically indicates our status and our value in society's uh, eyes. Uh, and even though here in France, for example, uh, you have to actually study uh, to quite a high level in order to uh, undertake a teaching profession, the fact is that teachers uh, are relatively um, well, low paid, and so they don't enjoy the social status that um, that they ought to have and that in the past they might have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for that, uh, for that very thorough report. Uh, we turn uh, to the Arabic group, uh, and we have Dr. Saud Al Salah from ABEX, who will be reporting in two minutes, please, the main findings. Uh, Dr. Saud? Can you hear us? I will be speaking in Arabic. As I said, I will be speaking in Arabic. First of all, I wanted to thank all of the colleagues in our breakout group. Uh, we were able to discuss uh, the challenges and policies, as well as partnerships and working conditions. When I say partnerships, partnerships that might be able to promote the teaching profession. Among the key challenges that teachers face, there is, uh, first and foremost, uh, the image uh, of uh, what it means to be a teacher and the need to bolster the status and image uh, of teachers uh, through the media and uh, through various uh, stakeholders. Uh, 
Uh, among the challenges, there's also the lack of support at the school level, be it uh, psychological support, uh, social support, financial support uh, for teachers. There is also the legislative and regulatory environment, uh, which uh, needs to be enhanced if we're going to make the uh, profession more attractive. Um, there is also a shortage of long-term uh, teacher development uh, training programs, um, and these should be available throughout a teacher's career. Colleagues, uh, uh, in Oman and in Egypt uh, also pointed out the environment in which teaching is performed and and uh, lifelong uh, training opportunities. And so what is needed is a policy overhaul, focusing first of all on training in the institutions and uh, universities, but also the um, ensuring greater autonomy for professionals. Secondly, professional development per se. We furthermore discussed uh, conditions that would enable uh, more effective teaching and decisive partnerships, uh, both at the local, national and regional levels. Partnerships, for example, between uh, uh, unions, partnerships uh, that are of a socio-cultural nature, and all of these different aspects uh, we feel are necessary to duly take into consideration to bring about an improvement. By when when a teacher uh, starts working, um, um, if all of these are addressed, then the profession will be more attractive. I wanted to thank everybody in the group for sharing their experiences. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, indeed, Dr. Saud Al Salahi, for for the group and all of the participants in the Arabic group as well. Uh, I'd like to thank also uh, Enoch. I know you're back for the brilliant moderation up until you got lost in the rooms. Uh, so we, we, I know we're over time, so if you can just wait for us a couple of minutes, three or four, uh, to welcome Mr. Boren Shakrun. He's the Director of Policy and Lifelong Learning Systems at UNESCO, who will give us some closing remarks. Please, Boren, the floor is yours. Thank you, Carlos, and uh, thanks to uh, all colleagues. I, uh, I would like, uh, first of all, to thank uh, thank Enoch, thank uh, the speakers uh, earlier, thank the moderators as well, and the rapporteur we had, uh, uh, and I joined uh, the, the breakout session, and it was a, a very interesting discussion, I believe. Uh, colleagues, uh, uh, this is the last uh, part of uh, the celebration of the World Teacher Day. We started uh, since uh, a few the, two days ago, in reality, we we looked at uh, uh, the role of teachers in creating happy schools and the importance of uh, happiness for teachers as well, and then how uh, the center play between learners and, and teachers in a, in a much more conducive environment. Uh, looking at their well-being uh, is important for learning and for for the learning outcomes as well. Yesterday we had a, a very important discussion on the shortages, on the attrition the data that we have from the global landscape, and also what are the perspective of uh, organizations that are involved in this discussion, uh, UNESCO, um, UNICEF, ILO, uh, Education International, uh, OECD colleagues joined us. And uh, we see that there are three aspects that I wanted to highlight in, in the conclusion of our meeting. One is that uh, the, the challenge that, are we, that the profession is facing is, is an international with an international resonance. Of course, there are diversity of context, challenges that are specific to a specific region, but the, the bulk is about a profession that requires much more valorization, more support, enabling factors that make the teachers act and teach and, and ensure that every learner is, is learning. And that's the, I would say, the goal of the SDG4, leaving no one behind. So the right to education depends on, on the teachers, and this is important. The second aspect that um, uh, is probably important that this is a profession that is evolving. It is uh, evolving because the uh, education sector itself is evolving, placing in lifelong learning perspective, for example, 
uh, engaging in, in a reform and transformation because the society is, is also changing, also because the economy is changing and technology, for example, is affecting the profession. So this is a profession that has also to evolve, to transform within this a new social contract that UNESCO called for as part of the International uh, Commission uh, for the Futures of Education. And the third is that there is a momentum, colleagues. This year is, I will call it, the year of teachers. We, uh, we had, of course, uh, a different uh, uh, important event, but I think there are, again, three aspects that are important to highlight. One is the high-level panel on the teaching profession that was set up by the Secretary General at the highest level, and that will be producing its recommendation. There is already a set of recommendations that has been prepared and will be made um, public very soon. The second is that uh, uh, we are, uh, together with the uh, other partners, we are publishing a, a global report on the teaching profession. Uh, and I know that the colleagues at the World Bank also, uh, and was where they were presenting some of the work they are doing. But it's a year where we are also capturing for the first time a uniquely, I would say, perspective on the role of teachers, uh, the data on teacher shortages and attrition, and much more granular data regarding um, SDG 4.C. And the last, uh, which is important, is that we are uh, heading to uh, an, the General Conference of UNESCO, where we'll be also celebrating teachers. Uh, we'll have a, a, an important discussion, including in the High Level Steering Committee on the role of teachers. And that's very important because that's the place where uh, the discussion on uh, advancing SDG 4 uh, will be taking place. So uh, I believe that there is a momentum uh, for us to, uh, to advance. And uh, there is also this international community of practice that joins the World Teacher Day, that is part of the Teacher Task Force, that is part of a, a much larger community that can be a driver for uh, advancing the agenda around the teaching profession. So happy Teacher uh, Day again, World Teacher Day. And uh, thank you to all colleagues who joined us. Uh, thanks to uh, UNESCO team and uh, Carlos and his team who uh, managed to organize this uh, very important webinar, also uh, another webinar early and, and the last uh, two days of celebration. Thanks to all colleagues who joined us, who celebrated with us, who engaged in, in this discussion. I wish you all the best. Merci, shukran, and muchas gracias. Au revoir. <laughs> Gracias a ti, Boren. Thank you very much. Thank you call. very much, Boren. Thank you, colleagues. Interpreters as well. Thank you. Thank you, Enoch. Thank you, Enoch. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Enoch. Yeah. Bye. Bye.